second time. <laughs> Five, four, three, two, one, and I'm live. Hello, everyone, and welcome to What the House is Wrong With You? I just like to say that sometimes. Um, this session is going to talk about our health. Today's topic is a big one. We're talking about high blood pressure and how to manage it. So I see all the waves of everybody coming in. You'll see me looking at different cameras because we are on YouTube and Facebook and TikTok and Instagram. So guys, come on in for our live session. You know, I come live with a live class every Friday, 1 p.m. Eastern time. And the name of our series is what? What the health is wrong with you? So today I want you to get your pen and your paper and sit down and listen carefully because we are addressing a topic that is so common. And if you are not a person who's dealing with high blood pressure, you know someone who is. So that's why I want you to sit down, take notes, because even if it's not you, you can be taking notes for someone else. Thanks for all the waves. Thanks for all the highs. Hello, 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 hello. Everybody can see me. Everybody can hear me. Before I get fully started, I want to wait a few moments, let everybody get sit, let everybody get situated and sit in. High blood pressure is a topic of discussion because it is a problem statistically worldwide, especially here in the United States. One in three people are being diagnosed with high blood pressure, and it's probably you, and you're taking medication. Some are taking medication, some are saying I'm not taking medication, but, but many have been diagnosed with it. And I'm going to share my story about how a doctor tried to tell me that I had high blood pressure, never had been diagnosed with it before. And I want to share with you some things, some secrets. I'm going to tell you some stuff. I'm spilling the tea today in regards to the real deal about high blood pressure and what it really is and the root cause that many of our Western medicine doctors are not looking at. Now, mind you, what I'm about to share with you is not coming from me. It is backed by science. In the replay of this video, I will put the resources where all of my information came from so that you can do your own research. I love when people do their own research. Take my information and research it, just like when I get information, I research it. I'm very analytical and I want to research everything. So everyone, hello, 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 come on in. For all of you who do not know me, my name is Debbie Williams. I am a board certified nutritionist and a specialist who I focus on hair health, skin health, gut health, liver health, and kidney health. Now, all of those things apply to every health problem you have in your life. If it's not your kidneys, that's the underlying root cause. It's your liver, that's the underlying root cause. And if it's not your liver, it's your gut. But honestly, those three work together. And then at times, of course, there's problems with the pancreas. So all of these work together. But today we are addressing how you can naturally manage your high blood pressure. So if you got high blood pressure, put in the comments, I got high blood pressure, I was told I got high blood pressure, I don't think I have high blood pressure, but I was told I have high blood pressure, I got high blood pressure and I don't want to take this medicine anymore, put it all in the comments for me. The first thing that I want to address to you guys, let's first talk about what high blood pressure is. And then I can't wait to share my story with you because a lot of you will probably relate to the story that I'm going to share with you. But high blood pressure, it's a, it's a prevalent cardiovascular uh, condition. And it's, it's known from around the world. And it's defined as a state where the force of your blood against your artery walls is abnormally high. That's where the problem is. And in so many instances, many of us are being diagnosed with high blood pressure and they really aren't. And there are reasons why when we walk into our doctor's office, our pressure is high. Because let's start there. Many of us have been diagnosed with high blood pressure in our doctor's office. And, and here's a reason that is true and factual. And I saw it happen with me. So you have a doctor's appointment and your appointment is for 930, right? You get there at 920. 9.25, maybe even 9.15, so you can fill out the paperwork and do everything you need to do. But you are at your doctor's appointment on time. 9.30 comes, you're still sitting in the lobby. 9.45 comes, 
you still sit in the lobby. Now you're stressed because you're like, okay, I had a 9.30 appointment. I was here on time. Where is the doctor, the nurse, or whoever? Where is everybody to get me going? Now, most of us, we have jobs, whether we work from home or we work in a corporate setting. So when we have a doctor's appointment, if it's a morning appointment, many of us have scheduled this appointment and then we're getting back to work or we got to go pick up the kids or, or we got a whole day set up. So when our doctor's appointment, that 930 appointment, it's, you still sitting in the, the lounge or the lobby at 950. Now your day just went backwards because you're like, oh my God, I haven't even gotten in there yet. I got to be somewhere by 1130 and you already know. So this is where your anxiety kicks in or your cortisol levels, which manages, the, it's the hormone, it's the stress hormone. This is where cortisol kicks in. And now if cortisol is gonna kick in from your adrenal glands, guess what? Now it's going to affect your blood pressure. So by the time you get to see the doctor, which is maybe 45 minutes later, because now you gotta go into a nurse who's like calling your name and tell you to follow, have you sit down for another 10, 15 minutes. Now somebody's coming checking your pressure. Now somebody tell you to get on the scale. And you know, we upset when they want us to get on the scale fully clothed. Cause I'm like, wait a minute, this is gonna add on another five pounds. Can I take these shoes off? And they're so like, no, it's okay. So now again, that anxiety is, is coming in. Now they tell you to go to this room and your doctor will meet you there. It is another 20 minutes, maybe 30 minutes before the doctor comes in. All of you who can relate to this, please put it in the comment. So by the time your doctor walks in, it's maybe 45 minutes later. Your anxiety, your stress, your cortisol, everything is now up in arms. So by that time, when they are checking your high, your pressure, yes, your pressure is up because the visit to the doctor caused it to go high. So many people have been diagnosed with high blood pressure just because of the experience of going to a doctor. Now, this is factual. I've read this. I've seen the studies behind it. So this is not just me saying it, but let me share my story to prove it. So some years ago, I needed to go to the doctor. Why? Because I had a bunion on my foot. And I was like, you know what? Yeah, see, bunions, my mother, I followed that foot that she has. So anyhow, I started growing a bunion and I was like, yeah, we're going to get this bunion off it. I was going to wait till December when I know I'm off my feet and I made my appointment. Now, when I made my appointment, because of the type of health insurance everyone has, you know, you got to get a referral to a doctor. So I had to see my primary doctor just so that I can get a referral to see a foot doctor. So when I get to my primary doctor, he's not there and he has some alternative person there that I've never met. And I was okay with that. But I waited in the lobby 40 minutes and I had a full day. And not only that, my day started out a little hectic because there was traffic getting there. And at the time, I still had some of my, who are now grown, children living in my home. And one of them, I will not say, had a whole lot of mouth and a whole lot of attitude that morning. So of course, on his way out, there was some exchange of words. So I was already up in arms and, you know, driving in traffic, up in arms, driving in the car. I don't know who he thinks he is. I ain't gonna take this mess from him no more. He gonna get out of my house. All of that was going on in the head. And many of you can relate to that too. So by the time I got to the doctor's office, I was already wound up. They took a long time to see me. So by the time they got me in and took my pressure, my pressure was really high. The doctor came in and she said, Miss Williams, do you know you have high blood pressure? And I was sitting on the cot and I was like, yeah, uh, no, I, I don't have high blood pressure. She was like, actually you do. And I think my pressure was like a 180 over something. It was really hot because she said it was so high. If she wanted to, she can call an ambulance for me to send me across the street to the, well, not across the street, but a couple of miles away to the, to the hospital. And I looked at her and I said, excuse me, I'm not sure who you are. I'm not sure where my doctor is, but I don't have high blood pressure. And she got in my face. She says, I'm telling you, you do. And I said to her, and then she said, what is your pharmacy? I'm about to prescribe you some medicine. And I said, see, that's how y'all get most people. But I'm here to tell you, I don't have high blood pressure. And she said, your pressure is high and you are not leaving here. I'm going to prescribe you a medicine. And she wanted to start the dosage right then and there. And I was like, I'm not taking it. You don't need to send it to my pharmacy because I'm not picking it up. So me and her, we had an exchange of words. I said, listen, all I need was a referral for my foot. I got a bunion. I'm not here for nothing else. And so she was like, well, I'm letting you know now. 
I am not letting you leave this office. And I said, because she said she wanted to literally let me go over to the hospital. And I tried to explain to her, listen, I had a very hectic morning. You guys didn't see me on time. I had some issues at home. There was traffic. This is why my pressure is up because I'm dealing with anxiety. She didn't want to hear from me. So then I told her, I said, all I need to do is calm down. All I need to do is take some breaths. And I know that my pressure will go back. And she was like, I never heard that before. And I said, listen, I'm a nutritionist. I know how this works. And I said, if I had high blood pressure, I would have known it by now. I'm trying to tell you I don't have it. So she said, well, you know what? I'm going to let you sit here. Since you think you have the answer, then you sit here. I said, yeah, well, let me sit here. Let me calm down. Let me breathe. And I'll, I'll show you that my pressure can go down. And so she left storming out the room. I sat on that cot and did some breathing, and I thought I could get up and leave. And I said, but I still didn't get my referral for my bunion, and I needed that. So I decided I was going to stay because she wasn't going to give me my referral. So I stayed, and I sat there, and I did deep breaths. And this is something you guys who have high blood pressure need to do. Sometimes it's just in your breathing because we, the way we breathe from the diaphragm can actually help to calm the brain and calm the mind. So I did a lot of breathing and breathe out. I started thinking about beautiful things. I started praying, which also automatically calmed me down. She left me in that room for 45 minutes. So when she finally came back, she brought the nurse. They came rolling in with the thing to measure me. Pressure was normal. I looked at her when she looked at me. She turned completely red because I tried to tell her I didn't have no high blood pressure. So then she comes to me and she goes, fine. Well, what are you here for today? And I said, I just need a referral. I want to go to the foot doctor. I want to remove this bunion. And she wound up giving me the referral. But the reason why I'm sharing the story with you was just that quick. A doctor wanted to diagnose me with high blood pressure and then add that to my life forever, where every few months I had to come in for a referral to, to, to fill a prescription. And when I fought it and when she saw, okay, this lady knows what she's talking about, she backed off of me. So I'm just here to tell a lot of you you too may be misdiagnosed and really don't have high blood pressure. But again, when we walk into that doctor's office, whatever's going on in our life before, during, and after could be a contributing factor on why your pressure is high. But another thing that I want to share with you for those who really do have high blood pressure, my story was a different one, but many of you really do have high blood pressure. But here's something I want to share with many of you that you don't know. The root cause of your high blood pressure is not what you think. When you get tested, and your doctor tells you that you have high blood pressure. Most of the time, if you ask, well, doc, why do I have high blood pressure? N normally, 9 out of 10, they're going to blame it on statistics. They already have your family history, and they'll be like, well, does your mother have it? Does your grandmother have it? Oh, well, that's why you have it. Nobody goes to go deeper. Today, I'm going to go deeper. I'm going to tell you exactly what science is now finding out that is actually the root cause of many. Not necessarily you, but just so you can keep this and understand it and have a conversation with your doctor that it could very well be because of your adrenal glands. And I'm going to go deeper into the role that the adrenal gland plays and that the hormone in the adrenal gland could very well be the reason why you have it. And you, if you are that person that you've had it for such a long time, because our pressures go up and down based off what's going on in life, and that means it never seems to get under control, it's likely it is due to your adrenal gland. So not only am I going to share that with you, but I'm going to show you how to make a juice. This is a juicing class. I'm going to show you how to manage your high blood pressure with a specific juice that you can make to help your body calm down, to help relieve with stress, to give your blood what it needs, and we'll go through all of that. So again, I put, you know, I'm always about keeping the notes. Um, so I will, before I even share with you, the root cause of what could possibly be your the reason for your high blood pressure. I want to share with you some facts about high blood pressure. I want to share with you some, some natural remedies for all of you who genuinely really have it. Well, according to a study from 2016, um, and this, this came from the Journal of Clinical Nutrition, they said, and I knew this, that there is something that you can eat, a superfood that you can eat that can help control your high blood pressure, and it is flax seed. Write that down, people. Write it down. The studies are showing how flax seeds can help. It helps to lower the systolic and the diastolic levels of your high blood pressure. Now, the systolic, for all of you who are new to this, is that high number, the top number. And the diastolic is the lower number. But when we add flax seed, an amazing fiber, 
to our diet that is loaded with omega-3s, it actually helps to balance out blood sugar levels. It helps with so many things that it helps you to manage your high blood pressure. So if you're a person who have it, every day, eat some flax seeds, make a smoothie and put some flax seeds in it. Put it in your breakfast. I keep ground flax seed here in my home and I feed it to everyone and I actually even put it, I have two dogs that are seniors. And every morning when I make their breakfast, I put flax seed, which is an amazing fiber because the gut, that's what heals the gut, fiber. So when we're adding flax seed to our diet, it's healing the gut, it's healing the liver, it's managing your high blood pressure, and so much more. But I wanted to share that. And the next thing I want to share with you are some facts about high blood pressure. One, high blood pressure can alter the structure of your arteries long before symptoms are even known. So some of you may have it and you don't even know that you're having it, but I'm going to share some things with you. Now, remember, I just said, we just talked about the gut. Your microbiome, this is science and studies are just finding this out, that the gut microbiome may influence blood pressure levels. That's amazing to know because we're all dealing with gut health. So if you have a gut health issue or if you have high blood pressure, your high blood pressure could really be because you have a damaged, damaged gut. But when you start to eat better, your gut, we can heal the gut. You can heal the gut through diet. You can heal the gut using food as medicine. You can heal the gut with fermented foods. You can heal the gut with all of those things and include exercise and good sleep and, and probiotics, which is helping to build back the microbes or the microbiome. You can also wind up helping and managing or reversing your high blood pressure just by focusing on gut health. One thing that's very important to understand about high blood pressure, usually when it's a fully, fully diagnosed, like for instance, that doctor, all she did, they didn't take blood. She just took my pressure. So my pressure was up and she was ready to diagnose me of having high blood pressure. But when they're taking your blood, it goes a little deeper. But usually when you have high blood pressure, one mineral is a factor and that's potassium. You know, guys, I'm always talking about minerals. Because minerals, they are the fuel that ignites your body. Your body cannot function without minerals. You cannot, and your body does not produce minerals. So the way our body has been made, minerals is your source of life. It is your source of fuel. And what are your minerals? Your minerals is your calcium, your magnesium, your iron, your copper, your sodium, your potassium, your phosphorus, your selenium, your sulfur, your manganese. I'm missing a few, but you get the point. That's what minerals are, and you cannot survive without them. You get your minerals from the food or the medicine that grows from the ground. And so potassium, when there is a deficiency of potassium, that is a signal that can create high blood pressure. In my practice, we do something called a hair mineral analysis. If you guys want to check your mineral levels, reach out to me and I can give you the information on how we can do a hair mineral analysis for you so we can look at all of your minerals. And not only that, in a hair mineral analysis, it's also looking at whether you have toxins in your body, um, arsenic, mag um, lead, aluminum, cadmium, all of these things, a lot of us have them and don't know it. And these two could also be causes on why your body is not performing the way it is and you even have high blood pressure. So if you are sick and tired of being sick and tired and high blood pressure is something that you have been dealing with on an ongoing basis, I am going to tell, tell you that a hair mineral analysis, just to see what your minerals, what you're deficient in, what you're lacking in, what you have an excess in, is the first step for you to recover yourself. Can everybody say hashtag self-care? Because that's what it's all about. It's not about going to a doctor and asking a doctor what's wrong with you. When I do these classes, this class is about knowledge. Knowledge is power. And when I do these classes, like I say, I need you to research everything that I'm saying. You don't need to take what I'm saying for granted. And you'll see the research will pull up all over the place. And now you're arming yourself with knowledge. And not saying that you don't need your doctor, but when you do go to your doctor, you are smart as a whip. And so when your doctor's talking, you're talking back. And you're like, yeah, well, I know, blah, blah, blah. But you know what I also notice is when you go to your doctor and you already are armed with knowledge, they talk to you differently. They handle you differently because they're like, okay, oh, she learned something. Oh, she's smart. And they will talk to you differently. 
The other thing about um, high blood pressure that I wanted to share with people is the role that your sleep plays in it. If you are someone who's suffering with high blood pressure and you are not getting at least an eight hour sleep, then that means you are messing with something called your circadian rhythm. And poor sleep, especially in these conditions, can cause something called sleep apnea, which actually affects your blood pressure. So just getting better sleep. And if you don't sleep well, that is a gut issue. Again, if you don't sleep well, that is a gut issue. That is a liver health issue. And of course, I can help you with that. So if you are a person, you wake up every night in the middle of the night to go pee and do the different stuff. You can't sleep fully. You wake up, you don't feel refreshed. You don't feel like your body is on a reset. Then we need to address your liver health and we need to address your gut health. Now, I've done this thousands of times and I have people that can tell you now they sleep like a baby. I'm one of them. I used to have gut health issues myself. And now that I know how to eat right, now how I, I know what to give my body, when I go to bed, I don't wake up in the middle of the night. I, don't, I sleep. And when I wake up in the morning, it's like, good morning, America. Good morning, the world. So it's nothing like having a good night's sleep. Another thing about uh, high blood pressure I want to tell you guys is that when you have high blood pressure, it impacts your vision. So if you're noticing that your vision is blurry and you have to wear reading glasses or you need real glasses, it could very well help. It's because hyperten hypertension can damage the, the vessels that supplies the retina. So if that is one of your issues. We might need to get that looked at. Exercise is very important for us to maintain our blood pressure level and to help. Meditation is also good. And here's one that you all will love who are chocolate lovers. Dark chocolate, the consuming of dark chocolate in moderation can lower blood pressure thanks to the flavonoids in the chocolate. It improves your um, vascular health. Now, I'm not talking about your Snickers and I'm not talking about the old Hershey candy bars. No, sir, no, ma'am. I'm talking about real dark chocolate that's about 70% chocolate. It actually should contain not cocoa, but cacao. Because that's where, and cacao is C-A-C-A-O. I'm going to do, do a video about cacao later because it is one of the most amazing things to help someone who's dealing with stress and anxiety. And that's why chocolate can help those who are dealing with high blood pressure. Because if you're dealing with real chocolate and it has cacao, which comes from the, the Theo, what is it, the, the Theo Broman tree. And white coat syndrome is basically when you go into the doctor's office and because of the high blood pressure reading, you have been diagnosed with high blood pressure. Um, and the other thing when we are dealing with high blood pressure, we have to limit our ligation, meaning alcohol. If you drink a lot of alcohol and, and trying to figure out why you have high blood pressure, you don't need to ask the question. Alcohol makes a change in your blood, in your blood vessels. There's an echo. Okay. Uh, I'm sorry, alcohol will do that. So these are things that we want to um, remove from the body. Now, let's get to the exciting part of this class today. One of the things I want to share with you is a root cause that nobody is talking about, about what could really be the reason why you have high blood pressure. It's called primary aldotestosteroneism. Okay, I can spell that for you. So aldotestosterone is a hormone that your body gets from your adrenal glands. Remember in the beginning of the conversation, I told you that your high blood pressure could be caused because of your adrenal glands. Well, let me see if I can explain it to you. Primary aldos, aldotestosteronism is a disorder of the adrenal glands. Now, the adrenal glands are two triangular shaped glands that sits on top of your kidneys. These glands produce different types of hormones for your body. One of the hormones that the um, adrenal glands produce is something called adrenaline. We've heard of adrenaline. You know you get that adrenaline rush. Let's say you, you, like you go on a roller coaster or you get scared. You've heard of the fight or flight syndrome. Well, the adrenal glands has a lot to do with your fight or flight. The fight meaning you like you're not backing away from something or flight means all right, I'm getting out of here. So your body, your brain will decide, am I going to fight this out or am I going to flight? I mean, I'm getting out of here. But the adrenal glands is, the, is responsible for that. The adrenal glands produce several hormones. And one of the 
hormones that the adrenal glands produces, aldos, al, al, I, help, I always have a problem with these testosterones. Aldotestosterone, aldosterone, aldosterone, I can say this all day long until I get live. I don't even understand it. But anyhow, that hormone is the problem. So what happens in it, I'll read it so that I can say it right. Um, the primary aldotestosteronism is a disorder of the adrenal glands, which I explained is the small but mighty organs that's perched atop your kidneys. Now, these glands, like I said, is a powerhouse of hormone production. And when they are in harmony, they play a crucial role in regulating blood pressure, electrolyte balance, and more. However, in primary aldotestosteronism, I said it right, this balance disrupts due to an overproduction of the hormone aldotestosterone. And that hormone tells your kidney to hold on to sodium and water, increasing blood volume and in turn, raising blood pressure. Now, science is just finding this out, but I will tell you, there have been studies on this for the last 60 years. There are six decades on studies that the adrenal glands could very well be the cause of most people high blood pressures. But our doctors are not looking at our adrenal glands. The doctor is not focusing that that could be the cause on why you have this problem. And what I wrote here, many might not realize that an underlying hormonal imbalance is driving your high blood pressure, making it resistant to typical treatments and medications. And when I say that, when you're on this medication for a long period of time, then you're resistant to a recovery. And so in the medical world, they are calling this the silent culprit because no one is really examining the adrenal glands. And another name for it is called Cone's, C-O-N-N, -N, Cone syndrome. Now, the purpose of me sharing this with you is to bring awareness because awareness is the first step toward an action. What, what needs to happen is if you have high blood pressure, you can go and ask your doctor for, for them to, te to test your aldosterone. There we go. Test your aldosterone levels. Now, I know of a study, and it was a full study where a lady had been, she had just had a baby and her pressure had went up so high, the doctors told her she had high blood pressure. And she was like, I've never had high blood pressure before. And they put her on medicine. She didn't want to get on the medicine, so she started doing research. And she started doing the research about her body, and that's when she learned about the adrenal glands and that this could be the reason why she's having high blood pressure because on her adrenal glands, she had a benign tumor, which means that her adrenal glands was overproducing out, out, there we go again. I don't know what's wrong with me when I say this, aldotesterone. She was overproducing in that. Well, she went to her primary care physician. He didn't want to test her for anything else. She was like, please, can you just see if maybe I'm overproducing this hormone? And he didn't want to. And like I shared with you in my story, most of us have to get a referral. So she wound up getting a referral. She wound up going to another facility who diagnosed it with, with it. And she's one of the first people that literally wrote a story about her journey of fighting to say that she didn't have high blood pressure and that it was a hormone issue with her adrenal glands that was causing it. And yes, if it's your adrenal glands, yes, your doctors can help with that. Yes, that is something that can, is fixable. And in her case, she, I'm not sure if she had surgery to remove, there was a benign tumor on her adrenal glands that was causing this overproduction. But she now lives a full life with no issues and no problems. And so that's some of the things that I wanted to bring about with the aldestosterone. Um, what else do I want to share about it? Millions of other people are not as fortunate. I said all that already. We talked about it. Okay, so now, everyone, what I want to share with you is what we need to do. Let's make us a juice. For all of us that's dealing with high blood pressure, I want to show you how to manage your high blood pressure using food as medicine. And today, we are going to be using the ingredients that I'm going to have to make a juice to help you manage your high blood pressure. We're using blueberries, and I've had my blueberries soaking in my baking soda and my food-grade hydrogen peroxide. We're using a Fuji apple. And why the Fuji? Well, first of all, apples are, that saying, an apple a day keeps the doctor away is very true. And apples are one of the most powerful 
fruits or foods to heal the body. Apples, the pectin in the apple actually acts as a prebiotic. And of course, our gut loves prebiotics. Our bodies need probiotics. But apples feed the good bacteria and they promote the growth of beneficial microorganisms in the body. Um, the fiber in apples are also known to have cancer fighting properties. And this is not just me saying it, this is studies. The pectin in the apple, it's a soluble fiber that heals the body. It also reduces cholesterol. And that also helps, you know, that's another issue with most people who have high blood pressure. They also find that their cholesterol levels are high. If your cholesterol level is not high, that has to do with your liver. Your liver produces bile. Bile has a lot to do with cholesterol. So again, like I mentioned in the beginning, the liver, the kidneys, the gut, they all work together. The apple helps to regulate blood sugar levels. And the apple also stabilizes your mood. Your apple reduces stress. De depression and anxiety. And this is all information that is researchable. This is all information that studies show. So we are using the apple in this juice to manage your high blood pressure. We are using the blueberry. I Blueberries, well, actually all of your purple foods are amazing. Purple and red foods are amazing to help manage your blood pressure to reduce the vessels, your blood pressures, or, or to widen them so that the blood can flow better without having issues. And blueberries are high in vitamin C. Uh, blueberries have the highest level of antioxidants. And blueberries is a superfood, especially for those who have high blood pressure. So we're using blueberries, we're using apple. And my last ingredient that we are going to use in this juice is the radish. The radish, as we say, is a panacea for the liver and the kidneys. So why am I using the lap, a radish in this juice? Well, because God, is, like I always tell everybody, God has a sense of humor. Even though this is a little tiny thing, nobody seems to care about the radish. The radish is one of the most powerful, powerful foods on the planet next to my pomegranate and my red cabbage. It, it's a powerful detoxifier. It purifies the blood. It kills toxins. It heals inflammation. It stimulates bile production. It alleviates constipation. It's a strong ally against cancer cells. All proven, all resources that backs it up. And it, I can go on and on about the apple. I mean, excuse me, the apple, the radish. So this is what we're using. So let me go ahead and rinse my blueberries and let's get this juice started. Okay, okay, okay. I hope all of you guys can see my juicer on in here. This is my Nama. We always talk about the Nama. This is one of my favorite juices. So for anyone who's on a health journey, I will tell you, yes, you do need a juicer in your life. Um, why do you need a juicer? Because if you're on a health journey, it's likely you ha you're having some health problems. And if you're having some health problems, it's likely because your body is not absorbing nutrients the right way. And remember I said nutrients. Your magnesium and calcium and iron and zinc and potassium and phosphorus and sodium, copper and all of those, all of those minerals, that's, that's what ignites your fuel. That's what ignites the energy in your body. That's what helps your metabolism. It's those minerals. And you need all of those minerals to sustain you. And you can only get those minerals from the foods you eat. So why do you need a juicer? Because if you're on a health journey, it's likely you're mineral deficient. Meaning your body is not absorbing your nutrients properly. Your body is not taking in that fuel that it needs. And so when the body doesn't take in the fuel that it needs, the body tells you, because your body talks to you. All your pain is your body's way of saying, I'm having some problems. And every pain is very specific. So for an example, a headache is your body saying, I'm dehydrated. Can you help me? Hello? We need some liquids. And so many different things. The calcium is the same. Our body talks to us. And so if you're on a health journey, and that means your body is not absorbing nutrients, a juicer will become your best friend. Because a juicer, I will say, cuts out the middleman. Who is the middleman? It's the stomach that has to turn the food, has to break it down. It's all the other organs and glands who once you chew that food, you chew it, you chew it, it goes down your esophagus, it lands in your stomach. Your stomach has to produce hydrochloric acid, which is an acid that helps to break down the food. But normally when we're nutritionally deficient, the body is not producing enough hydrochloric acid because there's not enough minerals in there in the production of that. 
Also, the microbiome plays a role in that. And usually in our health journey, our microbes are off. We don't have enough of the good bacteria that also helps in the processing of these foods. Also, when we are on a health journey, our liver is struggling. struggling. Our liver has about 500 jobs that it has to do for you every single day. And a lot of it is not just pulling out waste, but it also helps with breaking down fats and so many other things. So why does a juicer help? Because it cuts out those who, what I just mentioned, those are all the middlemen. When you're juicing, you're drinking it, it goes straight into the bloodstream, your blood acts as the transporter, and now your blood is transporting the nutrients from this juice directly to all of your organs and glands. And so that's why juicing is very important. It's cutting out the middleman. And so now your body is able to get the nutrients that it needs. Now, mind you, juicing is a supplement. It does not take the place for food because we still need fiber, we still need soluble, we still need insoluble to digest. But juicing is a way to give us the energy in a quick way. Now, I know my nom is a little expensive. If you're new to this game, you don't need to go and buy yourself an expensive juicer. You actually can go to Amazon. I like the Breville. It's an inexpensive juicer. It'll get the job done for you in the beginning. But once you become a juicing pro, that Breville is not going to do it for you. It's going to be too slow. And the Nama, what I love about it is that it's a juicer where, for one, it has a wide mouth. Most juicers don't have that. They have this small chute, and you just got to put a fruit in one by one, one by one, and sit there. Well, because of how the Nama is made, basically, I can toss everything in at one time and walk away. I don't even need to, to actually break up my apple, but I am because I want to take the core out. But now, like, so for my radish, I'm just going to dump my whole radish in. And please understand, when you're juicing, leave your skin on. The majority of our nutrients, ladies and gentlemen, is in the skin. So you want to keep your skin on your fruit. But that's after you've cleaned it very well. And like I said, I choose food-grade hydrogen peroxide and baking soda. It oxidizes it. And when I tell you, when you soak your fruit and vegetables in that solution, come back 10 to 15 minutes later, your water is brown from all the things that have come off of it. So we're gonna put in, I'm gonna put in my blueberries, and this is actually two cups of blueberries that we have. Now, if you can, when you can't afford it, organic is always better to reduce the pesticides and all the other stuff uh, in our food. Just a second, I need to core my apple, but I'm gonna core my apple, but other than that, I'm not gonna cut it up. I'm just gonna put the whole apple in my juicer. There's some questions. Okay, that's fine. I'll put my apple in. I put my radish in. Close the juicer. This is a very simple juice to manage high blood pressure. It's three ingredients. One Fuji apple, two cups of blueberry, and one radish. Now we are going to turn my magnificent machine on and let it do its job. So while I'm waiting for our juice to do its job, um, my assistant said I have some questions. I could answer some questions for you guys if you want right now. You said which apples are best? Is Fuji apple the best? Yeah, someone wanted to know what apple is the best. I love the Fuji apple because the Fuji apple is the sweetest of all apples. I, you know, there's hundreds of apple styles. But the Fuji is my favorite. My next favorite actual apple is the green, the granny. Why? Actually, the, the green apple is more powerful than the red apple. And whenever we're eating something sour or tart, sour and tart helps our liver. So if I wasn't using this apple, I would actually use my, um, I would use a Gray Smith apple. And so today my apple will show off. Why are you showing off on me, apple? You know you always just cut up and do what you need to do without a problem. But that's okay. I'll cut it up a little um, in here. I'll just cut it into two pieces. A good apple to munch on every day. A good apple to munch on every day. I'm going to say the Fuji apple. The pink lady is also a good apple, too. Any apple. Remember I mentioned to you. You remember that saying, if you're in my age bracket, you remember that saying, an apple a day keeps the doctor away. That just wasn't a tagline. That is the truth. I understand that so well now, how an apple a day keeps the doctor away. Because like I mentioned, all the things in the apple. And here's something that I didn't tell you guys about the apple. The apple actually, <coughs> excuse me, binds to toxins. 
the apple has the capability to remove heavy metal toxins from your body. And so when I learned all the different things that the apple can do, I said, that makes sense why an apple a day can keep the doctor away because the apple does everything that the body needs to heal. It has, it has everything that it needs from the pectin to it being a probiotic, a prebiotic, excuse me, to it feeding the good bacteria. And one of the most important things of a healthy body is good bacteria. You know, scientists have told us, and it is factual, that we actually have more bacteria in our body than we have human cells. So at the end of the day, we are more bacteria than human. And that means this body that we live in, we're just the host. We actually, are, we're like, we're the luxury condo for them. If we have more bacteria in our body than human cells, what does that mean? We're more bacteria than a human cell. So we're just that host. So the apple feeds the good bacteria. And as long as the body is hosting good bacteria, the body is fighting, the immune system is strong, Every organ and gland is getting what they need. And you, your energy, everything about you, even your weight is managed because our weight is actually maintained through our liver because our liver metabolizes fat. But when our gut is healthy, our liver can do its job. And you'll find a healthy gut person, their weight is exactly where they want it to be. Okay, so my juice is made. I don't know if y'all can see my pour. And this is the pour. I should have put my strainer in, actually in here. But this is an amazing juice. For all of you who are dealing with high blood pressure, let me sample this. Okay, hold on. Let me pour my juice. I, is my strainer, the strainer in here? Do you know where the strainer is? The strainer wasn't in there when I looked. Uh, strainer, strainer, strainer. Where are you, strainer? Okay, well, I'll do it on the strainer today. Because you, you can strain it if you want it um, a little liquidy more but this is it so this is the juice that you can have every morning blueberry two cups of blueberry one apple and a radish and this will help to keep your high blood pressure stable another food that is amazing to help you manage your high blood pressure is the pomegranate there's pomegranate is now not not in season but this that would have been my first choice so whenever you guys see pomegranates, please go get pomegranate, freeze it, keep it, because that is what I tell you. I did a video a month ago telling, talking about it. I was in Whole Foods and I picked up that pomegranate and I explained to you that it is actually the most powerful food on the planet, known through science. I didn't understand, but there's a million views on it. But I would have done pomegranate. So if you are a person that you're dealing with um, high blood pressure, Blueberries is something you want to eat a lot of. You want to have flaxseed in everything. Flaxseed, flaxseed, flaxseed. I prefer the ground. This way it's already grounded up and you can put it in your foods and your salads and your oatmeals. This is how you want to manage it. Oh, wow. Yes. This is nice. I feel like I want to put a little ice in it. And this is nice. Mmm. Yes, 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 yes. So I hope you guys learned from me today what you can do to manage your high blood pressure. I hope you understand. Have a conversation with your doctor. Have them to check out your adrenal glands because your the root cause to your high blood pressure could be from the hormone ald aldosterone. I said it, I said it, aldosterone. Your aldosterone, that hormone could be overactive and producing too much of the hormone. Which, is, which will cause high blood pressure. No doubt, no question, there's science to back it up. So thank you all, thank you for the hearts. Thank you all for joining me today on my juicing class and my class to teach you how to manage your high blood pressure. I'll see you next You Oh, you have some, okay, sorry. She said we have some questions. If you got some questions, put it in the comment. I thought this was the end, I guess it's not the end. That's okay, I don't need to go nowhere. You have some questions for me? Are frozen blueberries less nutritious than fresh frozen? A great question. Somebody asks, is frozen, frozen blueberries less nutritious? Actually, no. They are just as good. Because if it was done right, the berries were picked, and the berries, because of the manufacturing plant, the whole purpose of it was to freeze it, all of the nutrients are in it. So for those of you who want to buy frozen fruit, 
it's nutrient dense. Nothing has been removed from it. If they literally plucked it and bagged it, it is still very, very nutritious. You have another question? How often do you drink this juice? How often do you drink this juice? You can drink this juice anytime you feel your pressure is rising because it also helps to manage stress and all that there. Or you can make this a part of your health journey. If, if you feel like, you know, this is something because every day you are drinking, you are getting all the nutrients. I can feel it going down. It's going everywhere it needs to go. So you can drink this juice as often as you like or when you feel that your pressure is rising. For many of you that deal with high blood pressure, you know when your pressure goes up. You know when you need it. But also I want to say this to you all before we get off the call. A lot of times I get a lot of emails after my lives or even after my posts. People want to know how to get on the health journey. How can they help themselves on their health journey? Well, I have a, I, I do a lot of digital classes. I do a lot of online classes. We are actually putting together two amazing nutritional classes to help you on your health journey. These classes are basically to help you understand um, how to use food as medicine. It's, it's helping you to understand what to eat, how to eat. It is a there's two different programs. I have a 30 day program and then I have a 60 day program where every single day for 30 days or 60 days, I am guiding you on a system, a systematic way to understand how to transition from what you were eating and how you eat to how you can eat better to transform your life, to transform your gut, transform your kidney, kidneys, transform your kidneys transform your liver. And when you transform all of those organs, you transform your skin, you transform your mind, you transform your mental abilities, you transform your weight, all of that. So if you are looking for ways to eat healthy or you're looking for a health journey and you don't know where to start, please go to my site, the Digital Wellness Academy, digitalwellnessacademy.com, and there you'll see some information. We, we just started a program called the 30 Day Liver Lift. And in this program, we are talking about liver health because you cannot correct the body. You cannot reset the body if you don't focus on your liver. That's one of the major ones. You got to focus on the liver first. The liver is the hardest working organ in your body. And so we, we have that program and then it moves on to different programs. But I have so many different programs if you are really wanting to get healthy. And if you are, I mentioned in the beginning of this uh, live about getting a hair mineral analysis, if you want to start, because that's where you really need to start. You need to see what you're nutritionally imbalanced in. Most of you are guessing that you think you're low in iron or you think you're low in zinc or you think your calcium is low. And now you're taking all these multivitamins. And, and to be honest with you, I also have a video out there to share with you how you need to be aware of a lot of these vitamins and supplements because a lot of it is junk. And the, the ones that aren't junk, if you are having gut issues and nutritional deficiencies, the supplements you're taking, they're not being utilized. So we need to start with a hair mineral analysis to see what is going on. The hair tells the story of your life. We say in our holistic world that a blood test is a snapshot of you, but a sample of hair is the entire movie because it shows me everything in the minerals. And remember, that's who you are. You live off of minerals and you cannot function without them. So again, thank you guys. Check out the Digital Wellness Academy. Every week I'm surprised she usually tells me about my hair products and that I need to share with you. Oh, I guess she did, sorry. Um, okay, someone wants to know if they could put flax seeds in the juice. I didn't put flax seeds in the juice because I would normally put flax seeds in my smoothie. If you have ground flaxseed, you can put it in your juice, but it might be kind of thick in a sense. The flaxseed is best done in a smoothie. So this same juice, you can make it in a smoothie. You would still do your two cups of blueberries. You would still do your one Fuji apple. You would still do your one radish. You want to add two cups of ice and a cup and a half of almond milk or you can do oat milk. And then you wanna add a tablespoon of ground flaxseed. That is the blender version of this. So if you don't have a juicer, but you want to keep your blood pressure managed, again, you can do it that way using a blender. Now, before we go, I just wanted to share what we have going on. So for many of you who are new to juicing, 
I have a juicing course. It's called Juicing One on One. Now, when you go to, can they, they will find it. If you go to the Digital Wellness Academy, digitalwellnessacademy.com, you will see my juicing course there. It is an amazing course to take you from the beginning stages of juicing to where you are a pro. So if you're interested in really learning how to get, like I said, remember juicing cuts out the middleman. Juicing is allowing your body to get the nutrients that it needs in a faster and quicker way. Please check out the course at the Digital Wellness Academy. Um, in YouTube and on YouTube and Facebook, we will leave a link in the des description for you. And in TikTok, we will also leave a link in the bio for you if you are interested in signing up for the Juice 101 course. I think it's a great course. I, it took me months to put it together because I, I needed to make sure that it didn't miss any steps for any of you, for all of you who want to learn how to juice and you're in the beginning stages. And it actually is, is a real good course for even those who are already juicing. You may learn some things that you didn't know. So sign up for the course. Um, the other thing my team wanted to let you guys know, it's March Madness. And for March Madness, as you know, I have a skincare line. I have a hair care line. As a nutritionist, I developed a hair care line first because I wanted to share with people ways of how to restore their hair from hair loss. And again, that's a nutritional problem. Your hair and your skin problems, it's an internal problem. It is not an external problem. We have to fix those issues internally. And so we have a hair product line. And if you go to my hair site, this week we have a BOGO, buy one, get one 50% off. And the hair care line, we'll also drop that in the bio, it's hair, and scalpmeds.com. I don't want to say it too fast. Hair and scalpmeds.com. We got a buy one, get one 50% off. All of the products. It's a plant based line. Of course, it can't be a nutrition and do a hair care line if I'm going to have a bunch of chemicals and synthetics in it. So it's a plant based hair care line. I also have developed a plant based skincare line where aloe vera is the number one ingredient. And this week, we haven't launched it fully yet, but because of it, we're really doing a big sale on it. It's 30% off the whole entire skincare line from the face wash down to the retinal creams. I got the whole system there. I even have a sunscreen for us because many people, especially people of color, don't think that they need sunscreen. And we all need sunscreen from the sun. And so if you go to, when you go to Hair and Scalp Meds, you can also find the skincare line and it's 30% off of the skincare line using the code SKIN. But you can also find the skincare line at the website pure, P-U-R-E, pure7naturals.com. That's, that's where the skincare line is. So thank you all guys for joining me today. For everyone who stayed, I hope that you got some pen and paper and you are sharing this information with your family and your friends on how to manage your high blood pressure, how to reverse your high blood pressure, how to live a healthy life without medicines and problems. Remember, the hashtag for me is hashtag self-care. And then you can also do the hashtag Ask Debbie about hair and health. I will see you guys next week, next Friday, on my next live. Enjoy your weekend.